Uh, now, time to meet a Royal Navy fanatic who spent the last 60 years glued to one particular task, recreating models of every warship afloat since the Second World War. Philip Warren has a collection unlike anyone else in the world, a matchstick fleet made of, well, matchsticks, obviously, mostly. Uh, Julie Knox went along to take a look. It wouldn't usually be possible to get a fleet of 250 ships within the fort, but when they're on this sort of scale, you can. This isn't even all of them. Almost 200 more are in Philip Warren's garage. His scale is 1 to 300, so a millimetre on a model equals a foot of length on the real vessels. Everything from the surface line up is replicated with timber shivering detail. Every little boy that's ever lived has wanted to make a model, you know. I was no exception. And of course, in 1948, there were no kits or things like that. We built things out of what was to hand. So off I go with my matchsticks and uh, the skin became the wood from the old matchboxes. So this is number one, the very first model made in uh, 1948. It's very rough and very crude, but the idea is there. And of course nothing works, the detail is pretty poor, but it was nice enough to encourage me to have another go. And this has been the thing right through from number one to number 432, I like to think every model I make is the best one I've ever made. And these tiny pieces here are pieces of matchstick or matchbox carved up with the razor blade and the straight edge, as fine as that. Very, very thin, isn't it? And then I can make any shape I want or any object I want. I like to think there's no shape I can't replicate in this material. And the other nice thing about this model is it also demonstrates all of the moving parts. So the limbo operates, the helicopter rotates, the aerials go, the radars work, all the guns turn and elevate, and everything that moves, moves on a matchstick spindle. There is no pins, wires, plastic or anything else in them. A hobby that became an obsession with perfection, spanning 62 years. Phillips presented prominent people with mini versions of the vessels they've served in, and when older craft go in for a refit, so do Phillips. He adds matchstick modifications, but of course his don't stand up to sea trials. And you're right up to the minute with your collection, aren't you? Indeed I am. We're um, up with the Royal Navy with the Type 45 destroyer. The Daring This craft. is the Daring herself. Um, in service in my fleet already and I think just now in the Royal Navy and uh, I think at this moment I am actually slightly ahead of the Navy with the astute class submarine. Well we saw her I think earlier in the week but yours has been ready earlier. Oh yes I've had this uh, almost a year now. There is one thing that might threaten the speed of your future progress right? And that of course is the end of the wooden matchboxes which um, are very difficult to obtain now. In fact, as far as I'm aware, none are made, though it may well be there are some foreign countries that produce them, and uh, if anyone comes across them, I'd be, love to hear from them and acquire a few. When you envisage people watching you now, sailing around on the life-size versions of these, does it tickle you? Um, yes, I hope they'll be intrigued to think there's a matchstick version of their ships running around, <laughs> and... Uh, I hope theirs is considerably stronger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the horizon are the two new Queen Elizabeth class carriers, but Philip's holding off building those too early. He'll be 85 when the first of those enters service, and he doesn't expect his matchstick hobby will have burnt out. Julie Knox, Forces News, Wayne.